Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ming Pham, and I'm uh, currently I'm an engineer at Facebook. And the title of my talk for today uh, is uh, Deep Dive into Relay Store. And uh, so Relay is uh, a library from uh, Facebook, uh, which help you uh, when you're writing on web apps and you need something to manage your data for you. And uh, Especially if you have worked with something uh, in a React world before, like React, GraphQL stack, uh, there's a chance that you might have heard about Relay. Uh, it's an open source framework by Facebook. Um, and for anyone that is not familiar, uh, I try to keep my talk on, uh, uh, I try to explain the concept uh, on a high level note. Uh, but yeah, so before I start my talk, I want to really thank the organizers uh, I think these are great uh, initiatives uh, to, to share juniors and engineers in Singapore. So, uh, something about myself, uh, the guys in glasses on the left is me. Uh, this picture I took like a few months ago, but somehow the shirt uh, is the same. <laughs> and also the, the things on the right, like uh, what I have like come up with in the past few months, uh, I think I have to thank the circuit breaker period for vastly improving my cooking a lot all right so uh before like uh diving uh into uh the internal of relay storage uh let's look uh, at the big pictures and see uh how this piece of software fit uh, so a few years ago in 2013 uh, reacts was released to help have, have us like write web apps easier uh, so it uh, introduces concept of components. Uh, you can think of your apps as a, a list of components and the framework will figure out how to uh, make the changes, how to render the changes for you. And uh, two years later, uh, Facebook released another project called the GraphQL. And uh, this is uh, useful if your, you model your database uh, in a graph manner. Uh, it's a different approach to develop web API. Uh, and finally, uh, we, we can see that actually uh, there are some pieces missing in the middle. And now we have the back end, the front end, uh, but we are missing some glue code in between. Uh, the developers still need to write the code to, uh, to manually fetch the data, uh, to store it in the client. And then uh, he has to manage the uh, consistency of the data himself. So in that light, the framework I'm talking about today uh, was born and it's called Relay. Uh, it's a connector between the React UI layer and the GraphQL layers and it was released in the same year as the GraphQL. So uh, uh, what is Relay? And so in short, it's just like a data management framework uh, built exclusively for if you have a React apps and a GraphQL server setup. So uh, keep in mind that uh, Relay will not work with anything, like anything you throw at that. So only if you have like a graph-based server and using a front end in, right front end in React. So it's in charge of, uh, Relay is in charge of figuring out what kind of data I need to fetch, uh, managing the consistency, uh, and then present that to the UI layer. And we're going to dive into that uh, in a few uh, coming slides. Oh, uh, the big idea of uh, Relay, uh, you, have, you are familiar with the front-end application is that uh, data is the core of your apps. And Relay is really uh, co-locate the data with the components. So in the example on the right, you can see that uh, you are creating a post, uh, then uh, uh, then you, re you really need some uh, title and description. And this uh, data dependencies uh, in Relay, uh, you can specify it alongside the component itself. So uh, this makes the, uh, it makes it pretty transparent on what kind of data it needs. And you can think of your apps, uh, you can think in a localized manner uh, when when you try to reason about the logic of these components. And one of the benefits that uh, this model brings is uh, 
uh, it can actually make you uh, make you be able to uh, refactor the code uh, with easier, with more confidence, uh, make you move faster because you can uh, uh, reason about the component uh, in isolation instead of like as a whole, uh, as a part of the bigger apps. So this talk uh, is about the Relay as a framework, but Relay itself is not huge, but it does have like multiple moving pieces. The first part is the compiler itself. Uh, the compiler uh, is in charge of converting the data requirements uh, into a more understandable format. So let's go back to the previous slide where you see that the thing in red are really just the data requirements for this component. But uh, it looks like, uh, uh, so, but this uh, format is not very helpful for the framework. So the compiler will try to convert it into some uh, data structure that the framework can consume. Uh, the second part is uh, the meat of the whole framework is the relay runtime, where it actually manages the data fetching, uh, uh, storing the data, and managing the consistency. Uh, the final part is the React relay layer, where it provides some helpers for us to uh, work with uh, React apps. But for the purpose of today's talk, we are going just to look into the relay runtime. And more specifically, we're just going to look at the how the data is stored inside Relay. Uh, right, so let's start with an example to understand Relay better. Uh, let's say in 2020, we are going to create a new social network. And if you're going to do that, then you might need something called a post. Uh, the post uh, component on its own, uh, the UI looks up like, there are several parts to it. Uh, the good thing is that we can always divide uh, and concur this and into smaller components. Uh, so for example, on the top, uh, you can have something like uh, account sections, you have the usernames. And uh, in the middle, there's a post contents with some titles, some description, maybe some photos even. And finally, you have like uh, the reaction sections where user can leave comments, uh, share the posts. And the great things about uh, thinking of your UI as a component is that you can always do this like uh, multiple times. So let's say the post content is quite big. You can really split it out into multiple subcomponents, uh, like for example, text description or the attachment. Uh, so uh, you look at this uh, as a whole, each component has its own data requirements and the data requirements for exceptions uh, is very different. Uh, so if you organize your apps in React as a tree of components, uh, then naturally the data of your apps will uh, more or less look like a tree too. Uh, the good thing about Relay is that uh, while you're able to declare the data dependency per the components, but uh, uh, Relay on its own is going to think at the aggregation level. It going to think on the app level and it tries to aggregate all the data dependency of this whole uh, component trees and likely just make one query to the server instead of like issuing multiple queries. Uh, comparing this with a more traditional REST-based API approach, uh, you uh, you might need to have like to render one uh, post component. You might have like uh, one query for users, uh, one query for the content, and another query for the reactions. So that's going to be uh, more latency to this. Uh, you another approach with REST API uh, is that you can Maybe you can combine these uh, three APIs into one, but uh, this approach is quite rigid because um, and it's not scalable because there are a lot of ways you can, you have to combine the APIs uh, depending on what kind of components you're having. So uh, in Relay, uh, all of these are automated and the developers really don't need to think about that. Okay, so let's look uh, more into how the data is fetched from the server into the Relay store. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, you have something, uh, you have a web apps or a mobile apps, which is powered by Relay. 
And in the other call relay is a store. We call it the relay store. And on the right, you have a graph based server, and it's powered by GraphQL. Uh, and when your clients want to ask for some data, it's going to ask, uh, it's going to send a description of uh, what kind of data dependencies that it needs. So it can be a very, very nested structure, or it can be just like a simple, like a JSON, uh, flattened JSON file. And the server is going to read that request, pass a request, and uh, look into its uh, database, and then return the clients with the data it needs in the form that the clients ask for. So this data will finally uh, be stored inside the relay store. Uh, all right, so for, for the store, then uh, you can think of the store as a client-side cache. And uh, it is basically a, a smaller version of your database. Uh, it's called a subgraph of your database, but it's stored in a normalized manner. Uh, Relay is going to do some processing uh, step before uh, saving the data inside uh, inside storage. Okay, so to understand uh, the how, how data is stored in Relay, you need to we need to look into two main data structures. The first one uh, for Relay is called the record. The record is just a single entities uh, with like an ID a type and some other fields. Among these, the most important fields are really the ID, uh, are really the ID and the type. The type let relays uh, know like what data type it is and the ID uh, has to relate to, to identify this unique record. And in relay, uh, one record can be linked to another record, for example, uh, in this view, you have like a user, but he can has an address, and address is another record that uh, the user can link to. Uh, the second data type, uh, and I promise you, that's only two significant data types in Relay, which is uh, the second one is called the record source. It's nothing but just a dictionary uh, with the key as the ID of this record, and the value is the record data itself. And in fact, the relay store itself is just a big uh, dictionary, a big record source. And every data on the client side uh, sit in this big uh, dictionary itself. Uh, it has another, this data structure has another significant uh, in that uh, because there, are, there are, can be changes to the data store. All the, uh, all the changes are made to the store are expressed in terms of the record source. So let's say you are fetching some new data or you are, uh, you are updating some data. The results will be normalized into these uh, dictionary-like structures uh, before it is submitted to the data store. Uh, okay, so uh, I talked about uh, consistency before uh, in the client side. Uh, one of the decision uh, Relay made is that uh, it's going to be normalized and uh, so let's look at an example here. Like on the left-hand side, the payload is the payload you receive from the server for the users. Uh, it has like an ID, uh, a name for the users, and some nested field like address. Uh, but uh, this is not how it is stored inside Relay. Relay will uh, do some processing and uh, actually uh, separate out the uh, separate out this JSON payload into two records one for the users and one for address itself. And it's going to link up this record together. So as you can see here, uh, each record is given an ID and then uh, the users will be linked to the address field uh, instead of uh, storing the address data inside itself. So the reason for normalization is that uh, it makes it so much easier to uh, maintain consistency. So uh, let's say you don't have normalizations, uh, you, you need, uh, probably need to do more work to keep your data consistent. Uh, let's take an example here. So uh, I have two records on the left, 
uh, A and D, and they all have the nested field called C. Uh, so for example, maybe like you have two users uh, who are in the same companies. Let's say one day the company changed the name. Uh, how do you update the tools? Uh, how do you reflect it in your apps? Uh, if you don't have normalizations, what you need to do is that you need to find all the users uh, that uh, belongs to this company and then uh, go to find its record and do the updates. Uh, on the other hand, if you have normalizations, that means you are, uh, instead, of, instead of storing your data in a nested manner, you are just linking the records together. So on the right, you have like A is linked to a record C and B is also linked to the same record. And that's the difference. Uh, then the updates become pretty simple. You just need to find the record C and then uh, do whatever updates that you need. And this makes the change of uh, the, the update part pretty obvious. The second advantage is that when you normalize the data, you are actually saving some storage. So on the left, you are actually storing two copies of the record C, but why on the right, uh, because it's just like uh, you're linking the data together, then you only have one copy of C. So uh, that uh, reduces the storage overhead. Uh, all right, so uh, let's look at uh, the pipeline of how the data is written to the store again. Uh, here we have, uh, we will say start with some data from the server. Uh, they can come from the, like the results of a query or you are updating some data or uh, yes, having some uh, optimistic mutation, which is a concept in Relay. Uh, but Relay will try to normalize this data into a record source, which is just a dictionary. Uh, and all of that in the source in this form. Then the, the change will be published to the store. The store will look at the, 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 pay, the payload and then combine the data received with like his internal data. Uh, finally, uh, the store will notify the subscriber for changes. But uh, you can notice that, so uh, the most important thing about this uh, diagram is that uh, the publish and notify part uh, is separated. Uh, when you publish in the store, you don't immediately uh, notify all the users, all the subscribers uh, that something has changed. Uh, for some reasons, I will, uh, uh, for some performance reason that I'm going to talk in the next two slides. Uh, here's a concrete example of like, uh, let's go through the flow with some concrete example. So you have like uh, data, data from the users here. And this is going to be normalized into a big dictionary uh, called a record source. And this is going to be published to the store. The store will uh, figure out what has changed. And then after that, they're going to notify your subscribers. In this case, it's your UI components uh, that something has changed. Please go and update uh, all the fields yourself. Uh, Here's the one of the most interesting thing about uh, the relay uh, saw architecture is that the publish is really decoupled from notify. Um, so the reason is that uh, if you split, uh, you separate these two processes, then you can actually achieve some performance uh, because the store can actually uh, combine multiple payloads before notifying any subscribers. So let's say you have a post and then there are two comments uh, from your friends coming in. Then uh, instead of like telling your UI to update twice, right? You can actually combine these two into one event, which is there are two new comments added and the UI can just do the re-rendering ones. So that saves some computations. And so far, uh, I have covered how the data is written to the store, but it will not be complete if you cannot read from the relay store. So now let's look at how we can retrieve the data from the store instead. So uh, the cool thing is that there's only two APIs when it comes to reading from the store. The first one is called the lookup. And 
sin, uh, sin each component in relay must uh, declare data requirements. Um, for, uh, relay will convert this data requirement into something called a selectors. Uh, so for example, here you have a post and the selector is a thing that I have like circle in red and it's, it's asking for a post with a certain ID and what you're reading from the post is just a title and the descriptions. Then uh, you use this API, then you can get back from the source of the data in a form of something called a snapshot. And the second API is called a subscribe. And the API allows us to uh, register a callback so that every time there's some changes in the store, uh, it will tell us that uh, something has changed and we, we are, basically we can know whenever the events happen. So that is about the, the two APIs for the, for the read part. And one interesting, uh, one interesting architecture, I mean, one interesting optimization is that uh, the relay try to, uh, try to find, what, try to differentiate what type of event it should try to, uh, I mean, it try to limit the number of, like uh, events that can to tell the components. So let's say uh, you are having a, a post that listen uh, to records three and four here, but uh, during the update uh, from the server uh, sent to the store, the, the store has uh, re recognized that only the records one and two has changed. So uh, it recognized that uh, there's no way the components is going to uh, be interested in this change. So we we'll skip that. Um, update, uh, skip that notifications to the UI components. Um, then uh, potentially you can save com some computations from that. Uh, so that's a quick uh, rundown from, uh, for me for, for the relay storage, uh, which is a JavaScript framework to, uh, to work with the React and the GraphQL server apps. And with that, I'm going to end my talk here. Uh, I also want to do a plug here where uh, that uh, our company Facebook is hiring. So if you guys are interested, uh, you can go to the links here or just scan the QR code. Uh, thank you so much for listening and uh, let's have some Q&A. Thank you so much, Min, for sharing about Relay. Folks, if you have questions, you can either unmute yourself or drop them in the chat and uh, we'll have Min address them. Okay, I'll give people a few more minutes. In the meantime, um, just going to quickly share my screen again, if I can find where my, sorry, give me one second. I seem to have lost my Chrome. No, found it. Okay, so, all right, folks, if you don't have any questions for Min, that's okay, but we'd really appreciate if you could give us some feedback about today's meetup hang out, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can either go to the link at the bottom or scan this QR code and give us feedback, um, either for us as organizers or for Saranya and Min as the speakers. Tell us if there are topics you want to hear about or specific things that you'd like to get us, specific people you want us to get. Um, please feel free to add it in the feedback form and we'll try and address it as best as we can. If, yeah, I'll just leave it up there for folks to look at it. And now we have the floor open to just chat if anybody wants to do that. 